Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am going to be filming a bit of a different video today. We're not going anywhere. We're not, like, doing anything as such. Just found a pair of gloves in my coat pocket there. Oh, those are not my gloves. That's why I remember who they are. I lent my coat to a client the other day. Anyway, so I am going to be doing some loading practice. Now, this is practice for practice as such. So I think this is an important thing to talk about, but <clears throat> when we ask new things of our horses, I like to break them down into such small steps that they don't even really look like the thing that we're trying to do. So for example, today I plan to do a little bit of loading practice with Blondie and Dee Dee. So Blondie, you'll know, she's my older horse, she's eight now. And actually since the last video, she has shown us that she looks a little bit sore on her right fore. Somebody actually picked up on it in my last YouTube video. And I kind of thought of it as, oh, she, maybe she was a bit stiff with her PSSM, but actually it turns out not stiff with PSSM, actually a little bit not sound. Very, very, it's very sound in a straight line. Sorry, I'm just attaching my phone to a tripod. Um, very, very sound in a straight line, but slightly off on the turn, right four. So I am going to be preparing her for having some x-rays. Now that sounds a bit dramatic, doesn't it? For most horses, you would just have some x-rays and that'd be the end of it. But for Blondie, that is incredibly stressful. Anything to do with the vet is stressful. She's had a bit of a horrible time before with the vet. And so I am very mindful that I want to make these sort of things a positive experience. Now, one of those things might be that she goes to a vet practice. I don't know. But certainly being able to travel and load is going to be really important. And when I first got Blondie, she walked straight on the lorry, absolutely no problem, absolutely no question. And then the next time I put her on the lorry, we went to the vets. So it's also, it's partly my fault, F fault, wrong word, I had to, it was the choices I was given. But, I don't know if you can see me, but I'll hope for the best. Um, but now we need to build up some positive associations again. So I'm just preparing the lorry for that and yeah so we can open it all up this lorry which is really good so you can make a big open open space like that and it's obviously just on the yard so it's not in a bad place and I'm going to be using positive reinforcement with her so I have a bridge sound so you'll hear me go and then give her some snacks and what we do is we can then make positive associations with something that maybe for her has previously been a bit negative but I just want to go back and talk about that thing I was talking about about practicing something so often we practice something when we need it so we're like okay I'm going to a show in two weeks I'm going to practice some loading sometimes we don't even do that and we just get to the day and go god I gotta load obviously that's not ideal because sometimes the horse isn't prepared and what we want to be able to do is when we have these things that are potentially nerve-wracking you know when I look at the horse box over there that's a bit of a weird thing for a horse isn't it just to walk out of their stable and go and walk into this dark space so what I want to do today with my two horses is I want to start building up very small amounts of positive association with the horse box now I probably won't ask either of them to fully load, but I will start the process. I have started the process with Blondie. We've got to putting both front feet on the ramp and the same with Dee Dee. Dee Dee is only a very baby. The only times she ever went to the vets, again, the only time she ever went on the lorry is to the vets. Lexi, come here. Uh, when her mum nearly died, when she was a baby. So when she was about five months old, she went to the vets and, uh, then back again to look after her mum, be with her mum. So yeah, she doesn't have very positive association with it either. So it is a good opportunity today to practice. I've got some time, it's a Saturday morning. Might I be able to ask you to help me carry this? Um, so we're gonna do some practicing and we're gonna do the practicing of the practicing as such because there will be times when I 
actually, you know, practice loading them. So we're going to do it so that I, I, we can see in the lorry. So left a bit, that's it. Just moving them and then left a bit, left a bit, left. That's, that's right, that's left, there we go. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be doing some practicing of practicing today. So it might be that I only get to do a first, first few steps, but you guys will be able to see what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, the process I go through. I have got a full training process on my online platform about loading. Um, and I will tag the link up here. But yeah, I just, I, I want to show that this is how we do things. We don't just ask the horse for the whole answer. We ask them for a little bit at a time. So let's go and see. Let's go and see Blondie Dundies. Hello. Hello, madam. Oh, that's an angry face. Why are you angry? Why are you angry? Are you ready for some loading? And then dee 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 dees. Hello, deedles. We're gonna do some loading. Well, we're gonna go do put some put our feet on the ramp. Yeah. So I'm gonna be um, using my Pivo today. So Pivo will track us, hopefully. I'm going to allow this session with Blondie to be a little bit horse-led. Good. And now I just want to say as well, I'm not a... I'm not trained in, like, positive reinforcement. But I'm trying my best to do things correctly, use a bridge, that kind of thing. Interestingly, how positive... She is starting out. So I want to be able to go a little bit forward, a little bit back. Good. Good. And I've got hay up in the lorry. I want to make this a positive association for her, but I don't actually think that there is a particularly negative one for Blondie, but I want this to become a stress-free environment for her. Not that she feels, oh, go on the lorry, get stressed, go somewhere. Get on the lorry, get stressed, go somewhere, you know? I want this to be really relaxed and comfortable for her in here. So this is why we're using some positive reinforcement. And I'm not asking her particularly much. Yeah, good. So you see how she kind of wants to feel her way? So when she rests with that foot forward... I give her food. So that's what she associates with the positive. Not the whacking the floor, that's not so helpful. Concentrate. Good. Because I do think that when she loaded before, it was kind of, oh no, that's what I have to do. That's what I should be doing. Good. And now from here, I'm going to go off again, away from the lorry. Good job. And I'm really trying to notice that I'm being slow with her. I've noticed a few times on other videos that I feel like I may be going too quickly in my own energy and that I don't think she particularly good <laughs> likes that. I've kept her stable rug on today because she's not, it's not very warm today. So that's why we're wearing a coat. Good. Come on. You can actually put the foot on the ramp. So I stay consistent in my question. Good. Good. I realise I'm not very consistent with my sounds, though. If you're a positive reinforcement trainer, then please don't come at me. I'm learning. I'm doing my bestest. You know, lorries bang and make loud noises, and so we've got to make sure that this is a positive. Good. Come on. Try again. Try again. Yeah. 
So you see every time she tries and rests forward, I then reward no, <clears throat> concentrate. So instead of the like big action, I reward the stuff, the stillness of the feet. You see, as soon as I put any amount of pressure, the swish of the tail. So I know that I'm pushing too hard and I need to create less pressure. See the swish of the tail. As soon as I ask the pressure, the swish of the tail. Come on. Right four. You can do it. Good. And we go away. And maybe we go back once more and we see if we can go on that much and one more time. But do you see what I mean? That I'm probably not actually going to load today. Unless she suddenly offers a huge amount more, I'm not going to be asking very much more. Good. So we're getting that from the click now without the swish. And I'd like to today to get to a little bit more fluent in the two steps forward. Oh, good. And here she's just investigating the lorry. I allow her that time. Very important that she's given the chance to actually explore the inside of a lorry. And it's very interesting. When you uh, do the loading in the way, in this way, where they are able to explore. They are able to explore. It's remarkable how much exploring they do. You know, she's sniffing the walls. She's looking at the bot, like looking at the floor, feeling the floor, making sure that she feels that there is sturdy stability in the lorry. So we're just eating some little bits of hay and feeling some little bits of awareness of the space. Could we like bring the other foot in? Good. That was a good try. And I'm really important that I reward this horse trying. Yeah, for her trying is very difficult. So I really want to make sure that I am aware of when she does at least try. She's testing the floor and she's working out what is going on. And this is really important for her. She needs to know that she is safe in here. Good girl. And the fact that she is chosen her Saturday morning to come and stand here with me and show me that she is capable is really, really important because it shows me that she is trying and wanting to try and keen to do some learning with me today. Good job. Every time she tries without stress, I reward. Really nice. Good job. I think I'll do today. Sure, oh, I hate the bottom of this ramp. It's got this edge where it's just a little bit slippery. So that'll be all I do with Blondie in terms of the loading today. And I think it's important to acknowledge how we didn't get to where we wanted to get to necessarily. I didn't actually load her, but we made another positive step towards loading. And I think that we need to throw out that when we practice something, we have to complete it. It's just not actually relevant to completing to her life. Whether we complete it or not, that is relevant to my life and what I think is happening. But now it's interesting because it's bloody pivo, but I got cut off. But I've got to go and teach now. But I will do some loading with Didi once I've done my teaching. But um, really interesting that when actually we were finished loading, I was talking and she took me back to the ramp because she's interested, there's positive association, she doesn't feel not good about it. So yeah, really, really happy with that little session there. Um, I'm actually going to teach somebody now and we're gonna do some learning about loading. So um, yeah, I will re-adjourn this video when I come back to do some loading with Dee Dee. 
uh, my young horse, who will be doing even less than Blondie was doing. But I just think it's important to show you guys that this is where we start, because, um, yeah, we don't start with the whole picture. We start with the very first, first steps, and that allows us then to build positive building blocks on top of building blocks, rather than rushing having to go backwards rushing having to go backwards right i found another angle to film from because i realized you did just watch a lot of blondie's bum i know that it was very interesting blondie's bum but this is better so i'm gonna go and get dd now and we're gonna put her front feet on the ramp and i'm gonna show you how we do that so just briefly before i start this video with or start asking dd anything it's really often the process of something that a horse doesn't understand or doesn't have the answer to. It's rarely the thing itself. So like with something like loading, you know, moving towards a target with, uh, you know, an incline where they have to go into something that is unknown to them is far more difficult for them than the the parts broken down so like what i want to do with dd and it might be that we go and do a bit of this today is that she doesn't have a huge amount of awareness of lifting the shoulder up and so a, a step that i go to often with the young horses is teaching them how to lift their front legs we have a wall we stretch onto and so we can do that and we can teach them how to stretch onto something so for example, with Didi, you could see, you know, she's, she comes over, she's quite hesitant. She's not sure about what is being asked of her. And this is the second, second time we've done a little bit of loading practice. And so I'm really interested, good girl. Really interested to see if she can take a little bit more of a step forward than the last, the last time. So I want her to follow the rope forwards, the rope forwards, and take a step with the front leg onto the ramp. And I just let her explore here, because this is positive when she is exploraging. And you'll see she looks like she's stuck at the bottom, like she'd quite like to do something about it, but she's not really sure what to do and unless she gives me a slightly different answer in a moment of lifting the shoulder we're going to go down to the arena and we're going to do some different learning and i'm going to show you how i break down the process a little bit more and then on again you see how she just kind of bumps into the bottom of it good good very well done. Okay, let's go do some learning at the stretching wall, I think, because... So we're going to go down to the arena. And we're going to go and do some learning at the wall that we stretch on. So it's like an inclined wall. And what it will teach her to do is it will teach her to lift her foot up and onto something. And it's so interesting to see the difference in them. I had a horse before, Robin. You guys may have remembered him. Lovely chestnut gelding. He was the same. He got to the bottom of the ramp and he'd kind of be like at the bottom of the ramp. He could not work out how to lift his feet up and onto the ramp. Like he just had no concept of how to do it. So we taught him how to do it with the stretching wall and then he could load. And it was really interesting to see the difference. So we're going to do the same with Dee Dee. But yeah, I, I just think we need to, um, you know, normalise breaking the steps down for them because so often you know we expect a horse to do x y or z and even sometimes when they've done it previously before and then they stop doing it we expect them to be able to do it and it's really really hard for them and we need to not have that expectation your horse comes out one day and says i don't know the answer to that okay how can i break that question down into small questions that you do have the answer to or how can i give you that knowledge and that's where guidance comes in and you need to maybe reach out for some help but yeah, I just think such an interesting and important message to spread, basically. Right, here it is. There it is behind the gate. You see that? So you see it's obviously very steep. It's much steeper than 
much steeper than the, l the lorry ramp. I'm just going to move the mounting block around so that um, I've got space to put my camera on it so you guys can see what we're doing. But again, incremental steps. I'll show you. So she needs to have a few skills in place, which she does already have. So we need to be able to have the skill of alignment. So we align at the track, align. And you can see her hesitance already to be up against the fence and with something in front of her. We have done a little bit of this, but not very much at all. And there's some horses in the field just in front of us playing silly buggers. Good. So she needs to explore the whole area. She needs to be sure of all of what's going on. No. So first step is the alignment. So we don't have this issue at the bottom of the ramp. Good. Oh, you donut, you are. You can see she gets a bit upset. This is what we need to not be the case. We need her to have an understanding of each of these steps. Can you lift the front leg? Yeah, good. Very good. So you see here she has some understanding of lifting. Well done. Much better. Straight, straight. Good. On the first step. Well done. And then we walk away. This for me with Dee Dee doesn't feel very confident yet doesn't feel like she's like yep i absolutely know the answer like you see here her reaction is not to just put herself in that position yet go on yeah nearly well done you know lifting the shoulder is not something that a thoroughbred is naturally bred for well done go on yeah, yeah, very good. So we need to train a question. Not at me. Good. So you see, I touch the leg, we get the movement. That's what I want. So that then when we get to the lorry, I touch the leg, she puts the leg on the ramp. Here we go. Good. Go on. Yeah, let's try the other one. That's a great idea. Yeah, well done. And I'm still just rewarding very small amounts at the moment. Can we try the other leg? Yeah, oops, a bit. Don't pull the rope out of my hands. That's not very helpful. Oh, good job. You see how quickly she learns. Yeah, well done. And it is hard to get the other leg to do the job because well done. And we won't need to do very much of this to take the transference back to the other, to the lorry. Well done. Good. So I'm really struggling to get the right four to do the job I want it to do. Ch -ch -ch. So I'm actually positioning myself the other side. A little bit of alignment. Good. So just the fact that she touches it, uh, that's what I reward. Yeah, good. Come on then. I'm going to do a little bit actually of helping her because I want to show her the right answer. This one up here. Here. Job. This one. Up here. Good job. Just need to help her a little bit here. Seems she just she's got a big scar on the back of this heel now, and I think that it actually has. Well, my bodywork person has told me that it's really affected into her shoulder and. I think that's why we're dealing with this. It's just not what she feels comfortable doing, taking that leg forward and up. But actually, that stretching like this is going to be the absolute best thing that she could possibly learn to do. 
Good. Okay, so that's really cool, bit of progress. So now let's go back to Laurie and see if we've filled in that blank for her. So I've managed to organise a cameraman, which is going to be camera woman, actually. Very useful, hopefully. So hopefully now the idea is we've just been and taught her. Yeah, exactly that. How to lift the front foot onto the ramp. Good. But you've got to actually rest it on the ramp. Good girl. And the, the translation isn't 100%. Because it's not a, we want her to take, put the foot up and then flatten it out. Yeah, good job. And you can see her just finding, like feeling her way. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you just stop pulling downwards with your head and then I can actually guide you a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can see her like actually testing it out, working out what it is that she needs to do. Good. And the other one. Yes, good job. Very good. 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 Oh, what a good offering. Well done. I'm just going to walk away once. Go back again, ask exactly the same question, and that's all that she will, all that I will ask of her today, because actually, Jesus Christ, you smack me with your head, you giant great goat. <laughs> Come on, madam. Good. And you know, I actually think today she would probably go all the way on, but I don't feel like I need to be doing that. Because this is such huge progress from where we were even at the beginning of today. And what I don't want to do is ask her to come on the lorry and then her not know what to do once she gets on there. So yeah, I'm going to pop her back in her stable and I will catch up with you guys in a moment. So yeah, in between those two sessions, I had a client come for a lesson with their horse and they wanted to uh, start some groundwork with her. They've done a little bit themselves, but not a huge amount. They've been following my online platform and they have done some, but not loads. And they were finding it quite difficult because she's very, very quick, this bear. And um, so she'd obviously arrived for a lesson and I said, oh, how was the loading on the way here? And she said it was quite difficult and I had to get somebody behind her. And, you know, sometimes in those settings, we, you know, have to do what's the right thing. And we had to, you know, she had to get her horse here for her lesson. But in hindsight, being the most wonderful thing, preparation needs to be taken place. And I said to her, I said, you know, do you practice the loading? And she said, oh, sometimes I find it so hard to like get the lorry out and then be stood around for ages, you know, two hours until she decides that she wants to, if I don't use any pressure. And I said to her, but we don't need to do that. We don't need to load every time. I did not just load either of my horses. And yet I feel completely elated that I have had the most positive loading experience for both of them because they've both gone and tried to give an answer. They've tried to start the process and they've got a really good solution from that. So yeah, we don't have to physically load a horse to practice loading. You can put their front feet on the ramp and you can put them back to bed and you can say, I nailed it difficult if you don't have transport you may have to invest some money in hiring a lorry hiring a trailer whatever it needs to be they've got to think forward first few steps to the bottom of the ramp be calm around the lorry then they've got to be able to put their front two feet on the ramp they've got to be able to follow the rope into the lorry not by being chased or forced or pulled or whatever it might be it's a choice it's communication so there's my two pennies worth about the importance of practicing your loading, practicing anything. You don't just go and ride a dressage test for the first time at the show. You practice it. You break it down. You do the steps in place. You don't just practice jumping a course of show jumps at the show for the first time. 
that's not how that works. You would jump a tiny cross pole. You would jump even a pole before that. Even before that, you'd learn how to canter around an arena without the fences in the way. So we are breaking things down, but why aren't we breaking them down when it comes to things like traveling or worming or handling young horses? Break the steps down a little, little bit at a time. So anyway, there you go. An insight into how I train horses. If you would like to learn more and you would like a more step-by-step guide, then please head over to my online training platform over on Patreon. It is £5 a month. I wanted to make it cheap. I wanted to make it accessible. There are ride-along podcasts, tutorial videos, groundwork along podcasts, the whole shebang. So please do head over. Support me. It would help me a lot if you came and supported what I've been doing because there's a lot of content on there and not as many people on there as I would like to be absorbing that content. We hold monthly Zoom um, Q&As where we have conversations all about training and nutrition and loading and problems and whatever it might be. So yeah, I really hope to see some of you there. And yeah, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you for next time. Bye for now.